In this lecture, we're going to focus on the reaction mechanism of the formation of benzene disonium chloride, a very important molecule in organic chemistry. So basically, this molecule, benzene disonium chloride, can be used to form many other important compounds, as we'll discuss in the next lecture. So let's begin by looking at the general overview of the formation of this molecule and we begin with the benzene molecule. So if we take benzene and we mix benzene with nitric acid in the presence of sulfuric acid, we form nitrobenzene and we actually discussed the reaction mechanism to this reaction in a previous lecture. Next, if we take nitrobenzene and we mix it with ethanol and and this reactant, we produce the aniline molecule, which is basically a benzene ring that contains an amine group. Now, if we take the aniline and we react it with HONO, nitrous acid, in the presence of hydrochloric acid, we basically form the benzene disonium chloride, the final product. So let's, let's discuss in closer detail the reaction mechanism of going from this aniline to the benzene disonium chloride. And the reaction mechanism is shown on the right side of the board. So let's begin with the first step. In the first step, we basically take our hydronium molecule, which is present within our hydrochloric acid solution, and this hydronium molecule reacts with our nitrous acid. Basically, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen of the nitrous acid that is attached to our H takes an H atom, another H atom from the hydronium molecule. And the purpose of this is to create a good leaving group. So our OH, the hydroxide, is not a good leaving group, but if we protonate the oxygen, we create this molecule which is a good leaving group. So now let's take this molecule and let's react this molecule with the conjugate base of nitrous acid. So this is nitrous acid and the conjugate base of, nitri of nitrous acid is shown here. So we basically have this oxygen that does not have the H atom. So we have a negative charge on the oxygen. So this oxygen uses its lone pair of electrons and basically acts as a nucleophile attacking this nitrogen, so attacking this molecule that we formed in step one. And now because this bond between the oxygen and the nitrogen is a weak bond because this is a good leaving group, basically this oxygen acts as a nucleophile forming a bond between the oxygen and the nitrogen, displacing this bond, displacing this water molecule, which is our good leaving group, and we form dinitrogen trioxide. So this is basically formed as a result of this second reaction. Now, in the third step of this mechanism, we basically take our aniline and this nitrogen that contains a lone pair of electrons acts as a nucleophile reacting with the, uh, the dinitrogen trioxide that was formed in step two. And basically, this lone pair of electrons creates a bond between this nitrogen and this nitrogen displacing this bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. So we kick off this entire molecule, which is once again the conjugate base to nitrous acid to HONO. So basically we form this conjugate base which contains the negative charge on the oxygen and we form the following molecule that now contains two nitrogens. We have one nitrogen initially that comes from the aniline and the second nitrogen is now here. Remember we want to form the benzene disonium chloride molecule which contains two nitrogen atoms. So basically what we have to do is we have to remove these two H atoms and then we have to remove this oxygen and we will be left with the benzene ring and the two nitrogens.
So in the next step, this conjugate base uses its lone pair of electrons to grab this H atom from this molecule which has a positive charge on the nitrogen. So taking off this H basically removes the positive charge because these lone pair of electrons now end up on our nitrogen. So in this step, we basically form the following molecule which now contains one less H atom on our nitrogen. We also form our nitrous acid. So now we have some HCl floating around in our solution and the HCl can be used to basically protonate the oxygen atom attached to our nitrogen. So why in the world would we want to protonate that oxygen? Well basically we want to remove that oxygen. So if we convert the oxygen into water by adding two H atoms onto that oxygen we can displace that water molecule. So that's exactly what we're going to see, what we're going to do, as we'll see in just a moment. So basically, a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen grabs this H, forming a chloride molecule, which is not shown, as well as this molecule here, which now contains an H atom on the oxygen. So we have a positive charge on that oxygen. Now in the next step, we want to remove the final H atom attached to our nitrogen. And the way we're going to do that is by using a water molecule. So the water molecule uses its lone pair of electrons to take away the H leaving our two uh, electrons on that nitrogen and those two electrons form a pi bond between these two nitrogens kicking off the pi bond between the nitrogen and the oxygen. So now we form this molecule in which this nitrogen no longer has an H atom and this oxygen no longer has that positive charge. In the next step we once again take our HCl molecule and the HCl molecule basically protonates this oxygen here. So the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen takes our H forming a good leaving group, the water molecule as shown in step 8. So basically now in the final step what happens is these two electrons create a second pi bond between these two nitrogens kicking off this leaving group and forming the final product, our benzene diazonium. And because we also have the chloride molecule floating around and the chloride has a negative charge, it basically floats next to this nitrogen which contains our positive charge. So this chloride approaches the nitrogen because it has a positive charge and this entire complex is known as benzene diazonium chloride. Now this is a very useful type of compound because from this compound we can form many other important compounds as we'll see in the next lecture.